Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I am extremely honored to introduce a very distinguished gentleman, um, Chief Reginald T. Johnson. Uh, he and I were members of the Charlotte Rotary Club together, and Chief Johnson is still a member of the Charlotte Rotary Club. So we are just so thrilled to have you with us on today to share the information you're going to share. Reginald T. Johnson is the fire chief for the Charlotte Fire Department. It was, and was appointed in April 2018. Chief Johnson has acquired a Master of Science degree in Emergency Management and a Bachelor's degree in Management Studies, both from the University of Maryland, now known as University of Maryland Global Campus. He was an, an alternate on the NFPA 1710 Committee and has professional membership with the IAFC Black Chief Officers Committee, BCOC, North Carolina State Firefighters Association, and the North Carolina Association of Fire Chiefs and IAFF. He currently serves as a commissioner of the North Carolina State Emergency Response Commission, SERC. He has been married to his wonderful wife, Angela, for over 27 years, and they have two children together. So let us give a nice warm welcome to Chief Reggie Johnson. Do we want to have the screen somewhere okay, so you can see him online? Uh, okay. Is the PowerPoint presentation, Jenny? Yeah. yeah. Can we move the screen so we can see him or, or move them? So. <laughs> yeah. Where do you, what position you want? Just so we can see him, the speaker. Gotcha. So we can see Chief. Well, let's see if I can. Yeah, that's not going to let me turn too much, Jenny. Oh, okay. I wonder if we can. Uh, yeah, maybe we can. Turn it your movement. Yeah, if you could, yep, that's perfect. Okay, great. Sorry. Yeah, they can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I You mean? Well, I'm afraid. Well, you guys. That's okay. okay. That's okay. You sure? Yeah, it's better for them to see it than for us. Okay. It's good for video, but. Okay, let me share my screen. So. You know what? Can we move you over a little bit more? Yeah. 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 Is that better? <laughs> yeah. right. Yes. Okay. Okay, Chief, just let me know when you need me to, to go to the next one. Yes, ma'am. All right, so first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Thank you for having me. Uh, Cheryl is a, I consider her a friend. Uh, she's been very, very kind to me since I've been here in Charlotte the last five years. And so I really appreciate our friendship. You all have a wonderful person in Cheryl here, by the yes, way. We do. So, yeah. yes. If you don't know, you will know. So, yes. So, <laughs> so, so. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, I asked, hey, what do we want to talk about here today? And, and I'll be pretty quick going through these, but we'll have plenty of time for questions. Talk about Charlotte Fire Department as it is today. But there's an extensive Charlotte Fire Department history. Um, and I painstakingly went through a lot of stuff the other day. I just picked out a few things because I knew we had limited time. But if you ever want to, Learn a little bit more about it. There's books that are actually sold on Charlotte Fire Department history. You can Google it and it goes year by year. And you can learn a lot of stuff about the Charlotte Fire Department. So I picked a few things. Charlotte Fire Department, the actual paid portion of Charlotte Fire Department started in 1887. Before then, there was a lot of volunteer companies that protected the city. Um, and so you had the Yellow Jackets and the Dreadnoughts. Those were your African-American slave uh, volunteer firefighters at the time. Then you had Providence, you had the Hook and Ladder, and a bunch of other companies that actually protected the city. 
Um, but over time, they got to a point where they needed to basically have a paid staff. You know, so we started with the paid fire marshal at that point in time. We started hiring firefighters at that time. So all of our patches say 1887 on them, and that's when the Charlotte Fire Department started. Um, selected another one in 1912 was when they actually bought their first motorized apparatus, which is pretty cool. We think about that. Before then, there were horse-drawn uh, hand pumpers and steamers and things of that nature, which if you ever make it by Charlotte Fire Department headquarters, we have a hand pumper that was for the Neptunes, and we have an actual uh, steam pumper that's there. And both of them function and get tested, and we win awards. So they, they are legitimate 19, I mean, before 1887 hand pump. Still works. So feel free to stop by headquarters. They're both there. Um, the next one I selected was uh, the Palmer Building. So Fire Chief Palmer was was selected or promoted to fire chief in 1927, and he was well known in the fire service. He was actually the president of the International Association of Fire Chiefs in uh, 1940. I know you and I talked about Chief Fincher. Chief Fincher was also president of the uh, International Association of Fire Chiefs when he was here. Uh, but he created the first fire training facility here in the city. And it's called the Palmer Fire School. And it actually is still standing today. So if you ever drive by 7th Street right there, Firefighter Place, this building and the, and the tower, even though there's another building in front of it now, actually still exists. And so our union, the International Association of Firefighters Local 660, purchased that building just to preserve it. And so they use that for offices and banquets and stuff like that. But that is a legitimate building that was built uh, during Chief Palmer's time. So I like history a little bit, so that's pretty cool with me, and would like to share that. So, next slide, please. So as the city continued to grow, um, I find this fact to be very important. So pay attention to these numbers. So in 1950, which really isn't that long ago when you think about it, 1950, the city was only 31 square miles. All right, keep that number, 31 square miles, and had a staff of 192. Um, 28 pieces of equipment. So remember those numbers because we're going to talk about where we are today and, and how fast the city is growing. Um, they had a fire station out there at Morris Field Station because of the airport, and they bought their first specialized uh, piece of equipment out there in 1954. Um, right now we have three stations out there. Two of them have uh, your airport rescue firefighters, those little big old trucks that drive around and spray water and and all that other stuff. We have uh, several of those and are actually gonna be building a third station when they do that additional runway. Um, but we, we still staff those stations out there for the airport, which by the way is the seventh busiest airport in the, in the world. So just keep that in mind. Um, annexation was a way of life in the 1960s. It's a way of life, it was a way of life back in the 90s too and early 2000s as well. And so I think there's spurts of growth in, in every city and. 1960s was one of those times that the city was growing, and as the city grows, you have to continue to provide a number of services, and fire services is one of those that continues to grow. Next slide, please. Let's talk about a few other things that are pretty important in the Charlotte Fire Department history, right? Uh, the department hired its first African-American firefighter, Mr. Uh, Hazel Irwin, in October of 1967. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away last year, but uh, he was our first African-American firefighter in 1967. We hired our first woman firefighter, Rebecca Brown, in 1980. She rose up through the ranks to become a battalion chief. Uh, when she retired in 1998, she actually came back to work as a, a civilian, as our uh, facilities coordinator for headquarters. So she just retired last year, really. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but she's, she's, a joy to, she's a joy to work with and I uh, wish her well in her retirement. And then in 1981, they hired the first African-American female firefighter, which is Miss Linda Lockhart. Uh, and those are pictures of all those. And so there's parts of that history that uh, have gone on that I think it's pretty important to share with everyone. And, and again, there are pages and pages in a book of the history from Charlotte Fire Department. If you're interested, you can can work that. So I meant to bring the book with me and hand it around, but really it's a lot of pictures, not as much written word on that. Uh, next slide, please. So here we are, 136 years later. 
We have 17 divisions now, uh, 43 fire stations. Uh, and you'll see in another slide, remember we covered 31 square miles, the city of Charlotte is now 320 square miles. Wow. 320 square miles. And if you look it up, it's the same square mileage footprint as New York City. Wow. The only difference is we're not as dense, obviously, they're more vertical and they have a lot of density, but it's the same size footprint. So five boroughs is 320 or so square miles, and every annexation continues to grow that. We have 1,240 uh, full-time employees. That includes uniform and civilian employees. We have just under 1,100 firefighters that are signed out in the operations to fill those 43 fire stations. Um, we continue to grow as the businesses continue to grow. Fiscal year 22, the Charlotte Fire Department ran 143,447 incidents. Good chunk of those, just like any city department, are EMS calls, emergency medical services that we, we run and manage and provide those services. Over 2,500 fires, 668 structure fires. So really, that's pretty much you know one and a half to two fires a day. So and you'll see when we talk about trends, our, our fire trend is going down, and all the other calls are going up. But that's still a significant amount of calls. The majority of the calls that we run, structure fires or kitchen fires. People just don't always engage in the safety of cooking. Like they're cooked, they go upstairs, come back, kitchen's on fire, or you got long clothes on, or some people cook and fall asleep. I mean, it's just a number of things. And so we really push hard on, on the cooking safety. I think we can reduce a, a huge, significant number of those fires. We do work hand in hand with Red Cross, um, because when we have a fire and people get displaced, Red Cross comes on the scene and, and helps, the, helps the residents at least get some temporary housing until their insurance and that type of stuff can, can kick in. So we work very well with them. Next slide, please. Hey, Jenny. I'm here, it's not going forward, hold on. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm trying. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So that was a brief, very brief portion of history. I could, we could do an eight hour class if you wanted. <laughs> um, but again, 320 square miles, 43 fire stations, those are the red dots, and we're continuing to grow. We're going to break ground on a new station right there at North Tron and Moore Road. Just because of call volume uh, in that area. They uh, annexed what they're calling the River District. Some of you all might have heard that. It's you know, west of the airport. We're going to have to build a temporary station out there until we get a permanent one just so we can provide the services in that area. We don't have a station out there, closest station is like eight miles away. Um, we do operate under uh, NFPA, National Fire Protection Association, standard 1710. Our goal is to answer your call within 60 seconds when you call, process that within 60 seconds, have us out the door within 60 seconds, and then be at your door within 60 minutes. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. By the time you pick up and they say, you know, 911, what's your emergency? We should have a truck, our goal is to have a truck there in six minutes, 90% of the time. We've been very close. Um, I think Charlotte Fire Department has some of the best response times in this country. And I'll just be frank and say that. And I've come from another organization and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, we have not quite reached 90%, but that's a high mark to reach. But when you're in your mid 80s, you know, as far as percentile, that's pretty daggone good. And so but we, do, we definitely work to do that. With that, we have 43 engines, uh, 16 ladders. The ladders are the ones you see with the big ladder on top, the white ladder. Uh, the two rescue units, three hazmat units that are cross staff, 18 battalions, one of which is at the airport, uh, one division that basically runs the entire shift for 24 hours and a safety officer. So we have, we're one of the few city departments that actually has minimal staffing, which means, hey, if people are all for calling sick, then we have to hire people back or we, people can't go home. I have to say that, that's true. 270 is our number every day. That's how many people we have to have positions filled for everything in our current capacity. And then you see our mission uh, and our values that we, we always try to live by. So, uh, next slide, please. All 
All right, so we talked about the trends. There were some trends that we wanted to talk about. So these numbers come over the past five years, from fiscal year 18 to where we are today. And uh, as you can see, and it's broken down, it's probably hard to see the, the, the ledger there, but structure fires have decreased 10% over the past five years, which is a good thing, right? Uh, some people think fire departments are only here to fight fire, but part of our job is actually fire prevention. We have a fire prevention bureau that goes out here and we do inspections on commercial buildings and we make sure that the uh, multifamily dwellings are, are, are following building code. We do plans, plans review to make sure that um, the buildings are built with the proper uh, fire suppression systems and fire alarm systems and things of that nature because structure had that recently. Yeah. Client hit the building and the bank, and the fire department came in and checked to make sure the bank was safe to stay open. That's right. We do that. That's especially that's one of the rescue companies that have come out there and, and, and do that. So the goal between fire prevention, which is not only to save the lives of uh, the citizens and, and visitors of the city, but also to save firefighters. We don't put them into a building where they know it's going to collapse, cause issues, or whatever things may be. And then we have our fire and life safety educators. They are they're award winning. They win. They win awards every year. Um, they reach 100% of every third grade class in CMS that's in the city. We give them fire, fire education. 100% for the past since I've been here, long before that, um, to do that. And so I, I credit those two departments or divisions within the fire department that actually have reduced our fire infrastructure fires, which is a good thing. Uh, other issues, tech rescue, like we talked about here with uh, you know, the structural issue. I know you've seen some things in the news about the guys rescue people off the 30th floor of a, of a building under construction. That's all the tech rescue stuff, building collapses, trenches. That's even going up 28%. Hazmat calls. I mean, we have a lot of railroad around here, a lot of travel with uh, you know, tankers being on 85, 77, 485. Uh, we have a number of manufacturing places here in the city, and so our hazmat team is busy. EMS is one we talk about uh, where uh, the more people that come to the city, the more calls are going to run. It's just that simple. And the, the ratio that we use, it's uh, 0.38. That's, that's what we use. So every time city council gets up there and they approve a rezoning and they're going to build 100 you know, apartments or 100 houses or whatever, that's 100 times 0.38. That's how many more calls are going to run because of that development. So that's why we continue to grow. And uh, that's proven numbers. So overall, we've increased 15%, but again, structure fires uh, has decreased over the past five years. And I don't see this trend changing as long as population continues to grow. Next slide, please. All right, so I report directly to the city manager. There was one question how the how the uh, organization or how the city's now, you put all part of this already, right? So city council has three employees. That's the city manager, city attorney, and the city clerk. They hire those three people. City manager hires everybody else. It's just that simple. Right? Um, and so I report directly to the city manager. And I know this may be hard to see, but we have a number of, of uh, positions into the, the fire department. So I have three deputies. One is over operations, that's the 1,100 people. Um, that includes special operations, which would be your hazmat, tech rescue. We have some police assist companies, so we have people that are specially trained to work with SWAT, work with uh, you know, civil disturbance units and things like that, so we have that specialty as well. Um, and so he watches over that, the airport, and then three shifts that run to staff all the 14 fire stations. He's got the biggest number of people, obviously. We have business administration, which uh, you know a lot of people know or don't know. When you call 911, it goes to uh, CMPD's call or public safety answer. They're the ones that say you need police, fire, or medic. And then when you hit fire, it comes to our communication center. So we have that that we have to deal with as well, right? So we have a small group of people that are doing out there. Talk about award winning. There was a crew on there that won the um, APCO. On this one. Association of Public Call Taker Organization. I think that's what it's <laughs> we'll say that's what it is. Uh, so <laughs> they won a worldwide award last year. 
Well, not too many people know that across the world. I'm not just talking about the United States. I mean, so I'm very proud of the men and women they work in this department. They do things that we don't get a, don't get out in the public much to share about it, but but we do it. So we have alarm, emergency management. If you don't know that, emergency management falls under the fire department. Uh, so we have that responsibility, not just for the city, but for the whole county. That includes all the towns as well. Um, Fire uh, prevention, I talked about, fire investigations, you know, we're responsible for investigating fires. Uh, and again, we have a, a great group there. Um, it's a task force. We have ATF with us, we have CMPD with us, and then we have Charlotte Fire. And so it's a group of us that go and do that. We were able to get uh, an ATF K9 back into the city about two years ago. We had lost it for a period of time. It was down in Union County, uh, but we were able to do some things and get it back. So that's what I'm saying. I'm proud of that. So we got that back. Uh, personnel administration, just like any other organization, you got to take care of the personnel part with HR, training, hiring and recruiting. Um, those are things that are done under that. Um, then we have our public safety, or I call it uh, public engagement. Right? I don't want to just call it a public information office. Our goal is to engage the public. And so we have our PIOs in there, as well as our fire and life safety educators and our officers. And so there's a, there's a ton of stuff there. Um, but that's kind of a highlight there of, of everything. Next slide, please. So challenges. We talked about, we want to talk about challenges. So I went and looked and found this great picture of the Charlotte region in 2050. I know it's going to be hard to see, but you all have the PowerPoint. Feel free to email it around and people can look at it. But it just talks about the growth in our region over the, you know, the next 30 years. Uh, and it's going to be incredible. Uh, and so again, just think about that. 0.38 calls for service for every new apartment, townhouse, or house. And so I know I'm you know, off of, um, I think it's off Harrisburg Road or Albemarle Road. They just built a thousand houses out there. Okay, well, that's that many more calls for service. Um, so keeping up with the growth of the city is huge. Um, I think that uh, the manager is presenting his budget on Monday. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm prayerful that the growth will happen on Monday, uh, at least the proposed budget. Uh, I've, I've been selling to them that, you know, we got to keep up with the growth. It's just that simple. Uh, recruiting and hiring, keep pace with attrition. Um, anyone in here that's running a business or is still hiring and doing things that they need to realize it's just hard to get people to come to work. I mean, I don't know. It's not just public safety in general, I think it's just anybody, but we're seeing a reduction in the number of applications. Uh, we've still been able to fill our vacancies, uh, but we really need to turn that tide and get people interested in actually doing public service. And, you know, I know CMPD struggles with that quite a bit, uh, but that's a challenge for us, especially because it takes six months to go through our recruit school. We just graduated 19 folks today out of there this morning. So Cheryl, that they started in October. And here it is, they're ready to graduate at the end of April. So in six months, how many people have retired? You know, it just it's more a constant more than 15, right? It's just a constant battle to keep keep up with that. And so we've had to change a few things that we've done there. Inflation costs, we all know what that is. Um, you know, it's day to day, but it's also construction. So we talked about building a a new fire station that we're going to break ground on next month. If we talked about that you know, a year and a half ago when we started these plans, the cost was nowhere near where it is today. And so you've got to find that money. And when the manager proposes the budget and the budget is voted on and approved, that's the budget. It's not like, hey, Chief Johnson, I see your fuel prices went up double and I need to get you some more money. That doesn't happen. So I'm so clear on that. <laughs> Something else got to be cut so we can keep trucks on the road. But inflation costs is a, is a threat to us. Apparatus manufacturing delays. Um, that was what I was talking to earlier, Cheryl. That's why I, oh, I, yeah. I didn't want to get spirited with you. But uh, <laughs> uh, with them while you were listening. But uh, we used to be able to get apparatus, fire trucks built in about 18 months. They're claiming three years now. Oh, oh my gosh. Gosh. So if you're a very busy company and you're just running, 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 you all know how cars, our apparatus no different than cars. If you got to keep your car for another three years when you're already spending enough money on maintenance and everything else, 
they'll spend that much more just to keep that truck in service. And so those are some of the uh, challenges that we face. But uh, keeping up with the growth of the city, I think, is probably the biggest challenge as the city continues to grow. Um, next slide, please. All right, a little bit about myself. Don't like to always talk about myself. I'm an introvert. I like working behind the scenes. I don't like necessarily being in front, but did get appointed in uh, the end of April. So April 30th was my start date. So in a couple of days, be five whole years. I'm glad about that. Um, and always been easy, but it's been good the past three years. So I was also first African American appointed fire chief here. So I'm proud about that. And, you know, so, Before uh, coming here, I did 25 years in Fairfax County, Virginia. When I signed up for there, my father is a retired DC homicide detective, Washington, DC homicide detective. All my cousins were police officers. Uh, I'm glad you know, Fairfax called me first. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, to, was going to call me first, they called me first, so I'm glad to go there. Uh, but I did 25 years there. I went from firefighter all the way up to the number two spot, which is assistant fire chief of operations. Um, and loved every minute of it along the way. So got a lot of vast experience up there, and bringing a lot of the information I have up there and the connections that I have here in Charlotte just to make the department better and provide better service to the citizens. So I our ultimate goal. We already talked about my degree, asked about what I like to do. Uh, a doctor doesn't like that, but I enjoy uh, <laughs> trying new restaurants uh, and eating new food and trying new cooking recipes and so, We'll be doing that again this week. This weekend, my wife and I. And I enjoy quiet time with family. Work all week, you know, multiple hours. So Saturday and Sunday, I try to keep things low key and, and family. Next slide, please. Last slide. So there's more to the Charlotte Fire Department than you just seeing us up and down the road with lights and sirens and putting out fires and providing medical assistance. Uh, about uh, I think it was 2019, we started with uh, CMPD, the Sheriff's Office, and Medic, a uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion conference. And we have another one scheduled this November, and it's not just for public safety, and it really is an educational component. We invite the city and the county, and we've invited private industry as well to come out and just learn a few different things. We try to switch up the speakers all the time just to keep people up and aware on that, so I'll share that with you all. Uh, we have a Citizens Fire Academy. I've only scratched the surface of the things that we do. But the Citizens Fire Academy is nine weeks. It's usually a Wednesday or Thursday night, about an hour or two. And we go through everything we talk, everything we do. You know, we'll talk about alarm, we'll even go see alarm. You know, we'll talk about the rescue company that came out, and we get to see that and do that stuff. So I highly recommend if you want to learn more about the Charlotte Fire Department, there's one way to do that, Citizens Fire Academy. Is that a theme? Yes. No, it's free. It's free. Um, the, the, the conference is not free, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the conference is not free. But Scissors Fire Academy is free. Uh, Charlotte Regional Fire Foundation, there's a lot of things that we do uh, in the community. I know I was listening to you all talk about that as well. We have youth camps. Man, here might be interested next year. It's free camp, it's like a five day, four night stay. We really focus on, we want to teach a little bit about the fire department, but really it's about teamwork, about becoming a leader, being a good leader, being a good follower, just building confidence, doing things that you would never be able to do, like, you know, propelling out of a window and stuff like that, right? So it's a lot of good things there. And they're typically in June, um, but we'll take applications long before then. All these things you can find, if you follow our social media, you'll find out the time. You know, so I can get that to Cheryl if anybody's got any questions. Firefighter Burn Children's Fund, our group just went up to uh, Wake Forest the other day and visited a lot of the kids up there. We do funds for that and we provide scholarships to kids, you know, for college and books and stuff like that. Uh, we have CFD uh, canine program. One thing we implemented a couple of years ago, and I know we're in tight on time, so forgive me, um, is uh, we need behavioral health dogs, right? Because we see a lot of stuff. You shouldn't see in life, right? And so having these dogs uh, is one thing we do um, to help us whenever we go on a tragic event. You'd be surprised how many events happen in the city that involve children uh, and things of that many bodies. So 
Uh, fire education is another one. Uh, again, the fire foundation just collects money and then uh, you can do specific, like you can say, hey, I want to donate to youth camps or we can do general. Uh, military donations, matter of fact, starting Monday, May 1st through the month of May, uh, you're going to be able to drop off uh, military donations, you know, for our homeless vets. Uh, at every fire station. So there'll be more to come out on that. We work with the WBTV on that and the Red Cross with that. We do Steve's Coats for Kids. I know you guys have heard that a thousand times. Uh, every winter we partner with them. Bright Moves for Youth is a, another youth organization. Gets kids on the right track, you know, so they don't get off track. And gets them to through school and to college. Uh, so I'm a huge component of uh, support of that. And then we work with CPD for the toys for youth during uh, Christmas. So those are just scratching the surface on, on a few things uh, that we do beyond running emergency calls. And then I got book bags there. We also collect book bags and stuff like that for school. So next slide, please. And I am open to questions. Great. I'll talk to questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start in and we'll start yeah. I, I've always wondered what the relationship was between the fire department and the volunteer fire departments. How do those, how does that coordination work and how's the, who, who does what? So it's really different depending on the region. Uh -huh. um, I come from a region in the DC metro area where it's very collaborative, we work together all the time. It wasn't necessarily that way when I first got here, but we've definitely restored relationships. And our goal is to make sure that, hey, when you call 911, we can get you the closest help. That's our goal, right? Whether I'm a volunteer or paid, we want to make sure that we get some money as quick as possible. So we're still working through that. It's called mutual aid, where you know they're closer, we'll call them to come. We're working through that stuff, but our relationship is good. So, but they're completely separate. They, they are separate totally departments. Separate. Yes. So all the towns have their own fire department. Um, in the county, you have a number of county uh, volunteer fire departments. You've got Steel Creek, West Mac, uh, Robinson, there's a number of those. Uh, yes. Chief, I have a very personal question. Okay. Uh, when I heard you were coming to Shell, found out that there's a possibility that you and I have served on the same ground. Okay. I served as a volunteer. Uh -huh. to your question. <laughs> for 15 years when I lived in Burtonsville, Maryland. Okay. I did. Uh, when they Yes. So I welcome you as a friend and as a former neighbor. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. I actually volunteered too, not just I worked in Fairfax, but I volunteered in Prince George's County, Maryland. Well, I, we lived near Maryland. Yeah. Near Lawrence. Oh, you yeah. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, God. It is a is the fire department responsible for all emergency calls that come in to the city. That's many. All right, so I'll explain it this way. In North Carolina, the county is responsible for all EMS services, emergency medical service. So each county is responsible for that. So in Mecklenburg County, Medic was formed to provide that county service. Uh, what they've done is they signed contracts, they call them first responder contracts with all the fire departments. All the fire departments we talked about, all the towns, city, and all the uh, county departments. But medic is responsible for the determine who's going, what the level of care is, as far as you know, whether we're going emergency, non emergency, whether we're going or not going, or they're just going. Um, so medic is responsible for determining that, just based on that. Or any of their people co located located at the firehouse. So they don't co locate there. They will, uh, they use a system, system status is what they're calling, right? And so I don't want to get too complicated. But anyway, they, they park their trucks in our parking lot and they work for a call. So they don't work, to, our guys work 24 hours, right? 0800 to 0800. I think they work 10 hour shifts. So they don't come in and go to sleep or anything. They'll sit in there. Trucks or whatever until a call comes in. Not necessarily co located like the station. They're welcome to come in and eat and use the bathroom and do whatever, but a lot of them won't necessarily do that. They're more important. Yes, sir. Mine are two questions. First one is for instance, we're having our park event tomorrow. Do y'all still have a smokehouse? Uh, 
other educational units that could maybe in the future at, at next year's event we could probably invite them. so we do not have the smokehouse anymore and i heard that was a hit back in the day i think it's yeah, just yeah liability probably it's about just now. well that and the upkeep you know right. you got to keep, keep it up i think that that kind of went away but yes we did we talked about you know an award we'd be glad to have uh fire and life safety educators come out or i could at least get y'all some stuff to hand out that's not an issue i just need to get a little bit it's up on that. Oh no, we we were yeah. planning for next. Year. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Reach out. Uh, Cheryl's got my contact information. I pass my card on. We can get you whatever you need when it comes to that. And my second question is: Your water rescue dive underwater rescue units are are they coordinated with other towns <laughs> and other townships as well, or do you also have your own special? So we have our own. That's part of our special operations is our dive team. Um, so we have our own dive team. We don't necessarily coordinate with others. I mean, we'll respond with them if we have to, but the reality is we have our own team. I was just thinking with the lakes being multi-county, multi-state. Yeah, so everyone basically has their own team. Uh, one thing we've done, because that's the one thing that I'm not familiar with back, you know, you know this, police did all the diving back in Maryland and Virginia, I think, but uh, that's one thing that scares me the most, right? If you make a mistake in diving, Ain't no coming back from that mistake, right? And so we actually got a an underwater drone now, helps me sleep at night, and we can send the drone to do whatever it needs to do. Only because, and I hate to say it, but we've not we've not had a rescue when you start talking about diving. Chief, do you get many calls to assist the fire outside of Magic Purple Cafe? Not that often. Not that often. Chief, two questions. Uh, you you were in Fairfax uh, for a, a good part of your your career. Were you there during the uh, the uh, the sniper incidents? What special measures did the fire department? Because I know I was there as well uh, during that time. What special measures did you have? Don't be outside long. Yeah, it <laughs> I, I used to jog at five o'clock in the morning and I stopped. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you got gas, get your head on the swivel, that's going to matter. But nonetheless, yeah. we just, I don't recall us doing anything special other than, hey, when you go out and run the call, you come back. You know, the, the days of just going out and maybe doing just familiar, through familiarization stuff like that, we just kind of curtail a little bit of that. Second question is, did you all have uh, um, responders to 9 11? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your service. Sir. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Are we all still handing out the uh, smoke alarms that are extra loud for hearing impaired people? We do have that, yes. Okay. If you go to our website, which I'll tell you, the city just switched platforms, so it's a little wonky maybe. But uh, if you go to uh, the city website, to the public safety, I think it's on the Chechi's public safety fire department, we should have a list there. Great process, too. Do that, yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, sir. Not to brag on your department and our club, uh, but the, at that point, the oldest graduate from the fire academy was a man named Carl Bailey, who was a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, but Carl got a Paul Harris Award from our club for a road deed that he did at the West Year and then from the firehouse. The firehouse. Yeah. You'd be surprised how much. Work goes on here in the city on a daily basis. And they'll tell you, I'm pretty sure I did the same thing, right? We're just doing it now. That's what they want to tell you, right? I know you're talking about an award that, and they, guys can't pay more. See, see, if, <laughs> see if the, the fire department is going to, probably not this year, but beginning next year, yeah. we're, we're, we're looking forward to getting uh, someone for our first responder uh, awards. Yeah, I have one question. Do you have any fire in the forest, like forest fires, recent one we don't necessarily have uh, forest fires here. Doesn't mean we don't. But we have brush units for specifically for those type of fires. We have been. Uh, we talk about mutual aid. You know, doing those type of things. We have been asked to go to the mountain a few times. Some some years ago, about five six years ago, to help them fight forest fires. But typically, that's the forestry service that deals with that. Um, but uh, nowadays, we all need to have prepared for just because of climate change. And, West Coast is very different than here. Yeah. 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 
That, that's real work out there. <laughs> Danny, can we ask a question? Yep, go for it. I can go into a house anytime. You talk about pumpkin mountain, I think it makes a little difference. Hey, Chief? Yes. We have somebody online who has a question also. Okay. Go ahead, Daryl. Oh, okay, great. Um, Chief, thank you. I, I apologize that I couldn't be there in, in person. I really would. This was a phenomenal presentation. I'm glad to learn so much more about um, our Charlotte Fire Department. And congratulations to you. And we're so, we're so glad that you're here. Um, but I, I am um, the commander over the American Legion um, for all of Mecklenburg County, which has about 3,000 members here right now. And I, I wasn't aware that the fire department did the military donation. So I wanted to ask uh, permission to uh, call one of your your deputy or your personnel office to see about how we can increase um, that donations um, through um through our legion um, members. So I we just wanted to make that. I would have said that to you in person if I was there, but I'm on this call, so I just wanted to put it yeah. out there. So I'll work with uh, Cheryl to get you uh, information for the individual that's kind of run that. And this is only the second year we've done that, so don't feel bad. We did it last year for the first time. This is our second year. And so we're really trying to, to do uh, do some good things. But I'll get you the contact information uh, personally. Okay, awesome. We'll definitely increase the donations this year. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you heard Thank it. You. <laughs> uh, one more question and then we should probably wrap it up. Uh, Chief, uh, blankets or fire extinguishers for the kitchen? Which would you recommend? I, I have an extinguisher. Okay, that sounds like extinguisher. Don't go sounds... next to the stove in case you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exiting the building. I'm exiting the room. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Make sure you check it. And a lot of that was uh, red dots or something. Make sure the pressure doesn't. Yeah. How often should you change the fire alarm? So the new fire alarms are uh, way different than when we were growing up. They're ten years of battery, right? And so if your if your smoke detector still takes batteries or um, is over ten years old, I recommend you get a replacement for it. And you find that it has been battery the last ten years. And if you need help changing them, I can do that because I just changed <laughs> all mine. What's the cause? For the lifting of the knees. <laughs> okay, David, would you like to have the chief pull the raffle ticket? Also, yeah. All right. Thank you. Hey, Gus. You won last time, and I just gave it back to the club. Right? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Did you tell him how much he won? Oh, <laughs> So much, Chief. We're not done yet. <laughs> um, can you pa please pass up your cart buckets and stand for the five way test? Of all the things we think Sarah do, number one, is it the truth? truth? Number two, number three, number four, number five, number five. Number five. Yay. thank you all for coming, thank you, Chief.
Thank you, guys. Bye, Jenny. Bye, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully. Marja, I got dibs on the cake Saturday. What's that? I got dibs on the cake on Saturday. We'll let her go. I don't think she can hear you though. Kevin said we can't make it, so. See you tomorrow. See ya.